Studies show that raising alcohol taxes and price is the most effective public health policy to reduce alcohol-related harm. The revenues need to fund the government costs of dealing with alcohol consumption. Hi, I'm Bruce Lee Livingston, Executive Director and CEO of Alcohol Justice. Big alcohol needs to be held accountable for the tremendous harm its products cause. Bud Light, here we go. Increasing alcohol taxes at the state and federal levels will help reduce consumption. The revenue additionally should provide much needed funds for prevention, health care, and public safety. At Alcohol Justice, we promote alcohol taxes that dedicate funds to pay for the harm caused by alcohol. We support charge for harm fees on alcohol. Here's how it works. Higher alcohol prices result in lower consumption, which reduces alcohol harm overall. Higher alcohol prices also make substantial reductions in underage drinking and consumption levels of heavy drinkers. A 10% increase in alcohol prices would lead to a 3 to 10% decrease in societal alcohol consumption. The truth is that charging for alcohol-related harm is currently not a priority of federal and state lawmakers. The industry spends millions each year to keep it that way. Big alcohol enjoys easy access to lawmakers at all levels of government in the United States, and its nonstop lobbying has kept alcohol taxes low. Alcohol-related harm directly costs federal, state, and local governments an estimated $94 billion annually about 80 cents per drink. In the United Kingdom and Sweden, beer taxes are five to seven times higher than in the United States. Now, if we increased the federal alcohol tax by 20 cents per beer and a little more for wine and spirits, it would generate an additional $18 billion in annual tax revenue, funds that are desperately needed for treatment and prevention, hospital costs, and public safety on our highways and through the courts. Instead, the industry consistently lobbies to reduce taxes, even while due to inflation, alcohol taxes continue to decline in real value year after year. In fact, federal excise taxes have declined 41% in real value since the last time they were raised in 1991. Because they have not been adjusted for inflation, this decline has cost the federal government approximately $157 billion since 1991 in lost revenue. A large majority of Americans, 67 percent, are in favor of tax increases on alcohol. Alcohol taxes must contribute to what we call charge for harm programs. Charge for harm programs are needed for the prevention of problems associated with alcohol use. They're needed for enforcement and administration of the state's alcohol control laws. They're needed for treatment or rehabilitation for people with alcohol or other drug problems. And of course, they're needed for acute care, health care, and hospitalization costs. The alcohol industry regularly raises prices and pockets the profits while objecting to higher government taxes to fund alcohol prevention and treatment programs. Big alcohol does this because they really don't want any interference with their ability to sell more and to make even greater profits without being held accountable for the cost of the great harm that their products cause. It's time to make the alcohol industry accountable for the harm its products cause. It is time for the federal government and each state to pass alcohol tax increases, to fund charge for harm programs for effective treatment and prevention of alcohol-related harm, and therefore to fully charge for harm.